So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be talking about the limit comparison test. And this test says that if you have two series that have positive terms, and the limit of the ratio of the terms as n goes to infinity is a positive number, in other words it exists, this limit exists, it is an infinity, and it's greater than zero, then both series converge or both series diverge. So intuitively, saying that this limit exists and is a positive number, not zero, means that in the long run, these two uh, series behave in the same way. Maybe off by some constant ratio. Say if this limit is five, then you can think that this series is somehow five times the size of this series. But that's not going to make one converge and the other diverge, or vice versa. Right? So both either converge or both diverge. Let's take a look at an example. So does the series from n equals 1 to infinity, 3n squared minus 4n plus 5 over 7n to the fifth plus 6n cubed plus 1 converge? So we've already seen the regular comparison test, and you can do that if you know, if you have some sense of whether this series converges or diverges, and you compare it by making it smaller than a convergent series or larger than a divergent series. And if we didn't have all these complications, you might be able to do that here too. But it's not clear that we can easily determine, well, this is less than this particular uh, series or greater than this other series. We don't have to worry about that with the limit comparison test. All we have to be able to do is look at this expression and get some sense of how it should behave in the long run. So if we look at the numerator, the thing that determines the size for large values of n is the 3n squared term. The thing that determines the size of the denominator is the 7n to the fifth term. So think about determining the limit of this expression as n goes to infinity. Well, it, these these terms end up being disregarded. You end up with just uh, the first two terms to worry about. So we're going to do the same kind of thing here. So if we ignore these things, we get 3n squared over 7n to the fifth. Let's ignore the 3 and the 7. They don't really matter for our purposes here. Essentially, we're dealing with n squared over n to the fifth, which should behave like 1 over n cubed. And we know. that the series n equals 1 to infinity 1 over n cubed converges. This is a p-series where p equals 3, so this converges. And now let's look at the limit of these ratios. So we're going to take the nth term here, divide it by the nth term here, and then take the limit as n goes to infinity. So the limit as n goes to infinity of 3n squared minus 4n plus 5 over 7n to the fifth plus 6n cubed plus 1 divided by this term. But if we divide by 1 over n cubed, that's the same thing as multiplying by n cubed. So this is this whole thing times n cubed. Well, what do we have in the numerator? We have 3n to the fifth minus some stuff plus some stuff, but it's the 3n to the fifth that determines the long-term behavior. And in the denominator, we have 7n to the fifth. So remember, if we take a ratio of polynomial-like things, we're dealing with n, but the same thing, um, the same behavior we see with x, uh, we see here too. So we have a 3n to the fifth, right, this n squared and the n cubed, over 7n to the fifth. So when the exponents are the same, we just take the ratio of the leading coefficients. So this limit is 3 sevenths. So the limit exists, it's positive, and since this series converges by the limit comparison test, the original series converges. So 
So this is a good illustration of why the limit comparison test is so useful. You can take something that has a lot of complication, strip away the parts that you know you don't need to worry about, reduce this series to its essence, which is basically 1 over n cubed, and compare it to this nice series that you already know about. Let's look at one more example. Does the series n equals 1 to infinity n plus 4 to the n over 5n plus 3 to the n converge? So what can we simplify this to? Well, the top should be determined the top is somehow dominated by 4 to the n, right? This n term doesn't really matter in the long run. Likewise, in the denominator, the 5n doesn't really matter. It's the 3n that matters in the long run for really large values of n. So we can compare this to the series from n equals 1 to infinity of just this 4n over 3n. And since the sum from n equals 1 to infinity 4 to the n over 3 to the n diverges, Right, this is a geometric series. Whose ratio is four thirds. Right, and the ratio being larger than one, greater than or equal to one, means the geometric series diverges. So since this diverges, and now let's look at the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus. 4 to the n over 5n plus 3 to the n divided by this term. But once again, we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So we have times 3 to the n over 4 to the n. So we want to look at this limit. It should behave, this series should behave like this one. So we expect that the, this limit will exist and be a positive number. So this is the limit as n approaches infinity of n times 3 to the n plus 12 to the n over 5n times 4 to the n plus 12 to the n. And then if we divide everything, limit as n goes to infinity, if we divide everything by 12 to the n, we get n over 4 to the n all over, uh, excuse me, n over 4 to the n plus 1 all over 5n over 3 to the n plus 1. n over 4 to the n goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. 5n over 3 to the n goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So this thing is just 1. So since this series diverges and this limit equals 1, we can conclude that the original series diverges by the limit comparison test.